Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. Going to share with you some pictures today. We recently had a 76 Tiger come through the shop. Very clean airplane, only 1,500 hours, but it had a small, lot of small little things that we had to address. We thought we'd share them with you. It's amazing how just a little bit of time and some love can really change the appearance of something. So now that I've teased you with the rocker covers, let's move on. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So this is a 1976 Grumman Tiger. So being annualed in 2023, that makes it a 47 year old airplane. And it has the original trim washers from the factory back on the elevator trim. Now these work. But as things wear, they can jam and slip. So everybody's pretty much gone over now to the large area washers. We're using an AN970-4 in the place of that little bitty washer. It lets it ride a lot nicer on the outside of the uh, bracket. And that way it won't wear. You also want to make sure that you keep those clean. These bits and pieces, the roller and the bushing inside, were all very dirty from being just lubricated for 47 years and never taken apart and clean. But here it is all reassembled with the large area trim washers. Everything's been cleaned. And as you can see, it looks a little bit better. Now, it won't jam, and there's really nothing wrong with the old ones. So, you also saw in the opening that we did a rocker cover repaint. We were doing the baffles and the seals, and the rocker covers on this 1500 hour engine looked pretty bad. But once you repaint them, huh, guess what? They look pretty good. Now we've got some more for you, so stay tuned. Now all of this work on the airplane took about 90 hours. 25 hours for the annual it came in for, and then all the repairs that were approved by the owner, another 70 hours. So you can see, it doesn't take long to add up to some time, but again, it hadn't received a lot of love in a long time. Look at the ride bumpers in the back, it had two. Now from the position of the trim tabs, we can tell the airplane's pretty much out of rig because they were both deflected up the same amount to the max deflection. You're not going to get any more than 45 degrees. So we had to rig the airplane. Airplane was about six knots faster after rigging. Stay tuned for some more fun. And as you can see, the fairing ring and the front strut need to have some paint attended to it. By the way, this strut had not been pulled in 11 years. It did come out fairly nicely. We also looked and investigated all the fuel stains on the bottom of the wing from the vents. We also found a leak at the spar. But again, all things that are addressed, they were all within airworthy standards. But again, the owner decided that he'd like to have all these cleaned up. And we went and attacked them. So the pictures you'll see later won't have all these fuel stains on there. So again, take some time, give your airplane some love, and get it knocked into really good shape. Again, this is a 47-year-old airplane. It's been, it was very clean in a low time. It just had not received a lot of grum and love, as you will see. Now, here's something we see on a lot of airplanes. They come in, they don't have a canopy seal. Or they have the canopy sealed backwards, or the seal has failed. And then we also have the double bead seals. In this case, a single bead seal, because somebody had removed one. But again, you get the idea that... On our aircraft, this does a very good job of keeping the water out of our cabin. And that's why we have that little boot over the flap switch because it's right underneath the, where the water would come through through the canopy. So you want to make sure your seals are in good shape. Call Fletch Air. They're working on getting some more. But again, check the seals on your airplane to keep your cabin dry. We also found a broken seat handle on one of the chairs up front. And the reason for it became fairly obvious because somebody had put the wrong bolts in there and it required quite a bit of adjustment to get them right. They were using an AN4 bolt instead of the clevis bolt that's supposed to be in there with a rounded head so it won't catch when the uh, handle goes by. And as you can see here, an AN4 bolt will fit in there just fine. You can attack it with a, a ratchet and a wrench, but it's not the correct hardware and that's the reason why we have that rounded head so we don't have a chance of false latching and having our seat move during takeoff. 
And then here you can look at the comparison between the two heads and the um, of the two bolts and you can see how they each affect the uh, profile along on the shaft standby. And here we can see on the profile the shot of the AM4 and the Clevis 24-8 bolt. You can see there's a little difference, but again, get the right one for your airplane. Now, cammed out screws are a fun one. Uh, screws are about 27 cents each in stainless steel. It's not worthwhile putting an old one back in because you cam it out like that, you're going to have to either ream it out or easy out it. It's going to take a little bit more time than removing a normal screw, so what you lose so what you saved in that 27 cents, you probably spent 20 something dollars in labor to get it out or more depending on how difficult it is. So replace those screws. Not something you normally see on a pre-flight, but here in the, uh, as you can see on the back by the firewall where the bracket is, the bolts are missing on the, that hold the uh, upper cowling onto the airplane. We'll also see in a minute that the brackets are broken. Uh, probably part of having the hardware missing. So again, those were all things that had to be addressed. Luckily, we had some spares that we keep on the shelf of the brackets, and those are available from Fletch Air, or it's an easy part to make yourself out of the proper aluminum. So ladies and gentlemen, give your airplane a good glance at annual. After all, if it's 47 years old, there's probably some stuff hiding. Now here's one as Grumman owners we hate to see. It's a punched out spinner back plate. To add insult to injury, the shop that installed this new spinner back plate, according to the logbook, they're the ones that punched it out because it had just been bought and installed on the airplane. So you want to make sure you usually have two people to do this on a Tiger. That's because of the low profile studs that we have across from each other. But again, be very careful. These are expensive and they're not fun so take your time and you don't want to be punching them out you also don't want that little sliver of metal getting in there as happened to senator inhoff when it got locked between the spacer and the flange and eventually worked the bolt loose and caused him to lose his propeller so keep an eye on these take your time with them make sure you have them on there right before you torque them down you don't want to be punching out those spinner back plates so stay tuned for some more fun Scat tubing looked fine until we grabbed it and moved it and then we saw all the slits in it and we knew at that point that piece of scat tubing had to be replaced. So take a good look at all of yours. Now while the airplane was in the shop we also did the baffles and the seals, the baffle seals on the engine. It's going to get a lot better cooling. As you can see a lot of the original baffles were factory original. They were riveted in over the years and in one case on one side they were all stapled in. So we took the baffles off, we cleaned everything and inspected them, those that we had to replace we did, and then everything was primed and painted and then the baffle seal material was added. Now you do have the baffle seals that you see around the top of the engine, but in our aircraft it's very important that you take care of the seal up in the front under the nose bowl wraps around the front. That lets a lot of air spill out and you want that air to be forced up to the upper side so they can go through the cylinders and cool them as you're flying along. And you've seen tons of videos of us taking the baffle seals and stripping them down and bead blasting them and repairing them and getting them all shaped up. So we thought we'd save you all of that since we already have video on that. This is just the raw engine with all the seals on it and we're getting ready to start adding them all back. So ladies and gentlemen, it's not again a hard project, it's just one that you want to take your time make sure you have everything painted properly and put it back on. Not only will the new baffles and seals cool the engine when you've blocked all the holes, but it'll look a lot nicer when people walk up to your airplane and you pop the cowling and they look in there and go, oh, look at that. Everything looks nice and gorgeous and new. So ladies and gentlemen, that's part of one of the projects that we did. Now stay tuned for more cooling. Now this 76 Tiger was equipped with the original fiberglass air exit ramps which had been heated and gotten soft and you know flexed down over the years and so we're adding the larger Bob Stewart style air exit ramps out of aluminum so you'll get more exhaust so you get better cooling of the engine. Now we've got videos on this you can go back and look at the other ones but the basic procedure is you take the old ramps off 
you get the new ones in place and mark them and then you go ahead and drill them and then at that point you prep everything with alodyne and then you prime and then you paint and then you can rivet it all back together now here is the here are the new air exit ramps and they're just sitting on top of their opening getting ready to be marked so that everything can be matched drilled to be re riveted back in place and as you can see they offer a room for a lot more air to get out of your cowling the general rule of thumb in cooling an aircraft is for every one square inch of intake you have you want to have three inches of square inches of exit for the warm air to go out on our tigers we feature two to one we have two inches for every one inch out so we're behind the curve and this is where the larger exit ramps will let a lot more air out now what that does is it forces the air through the inner cylinders a lot more and with the inner cylinders that's where you get your real cooling on the bosses by the exhaust and everything so now everything's been match drilled on that one air exit ramp and everything's held in by Clecos. we're going to do the same thing with the other one and get it all ready and then when those are done again they're going to be acid etched they're going to be alodyned then they'll be primed and they'll be painted we don't want to have any corrosion between bare aluminums together and then as you can see Clecos come in wonderfully handy uh, for putting parts like this together and the Clico pliers so once you get it all shaped and match drilled painted and primed then it's a simple matter of coming along and carefully pop riveting you don't want to cause any distortion by using too big of rivets uh, you don't want to use cherry max rivet here the uh, 16010410 rivets will be just fine in aluminum again everything's been primed and painted so we're keeping corrosion at bay but again as you can see we're going to get a lot more cooling flow now the one thing that we do add on the top of the exit ramps right there we have those little lips for stiffeners we take a piece of rubber tubing and split it and we glue it on so that any scat tubing or hose that hits that sharp metal edge will not rub and then here you can see up against the side of the hanger you can see how they shape up and what they're going to be like on the inside right before we're getting ready to pop rivet them so again uh, it's not a hard job it does take some time and as you can see here this is all the front baffling seal and everything in a box getting ready to go down and be bead blasted so that it can be painted and everything and then here's the difference in the profile of those air exit ramps there's the original in front and behind it you can see the proud um, aluminum larger exit ramp and here they are from the front side and as you can see you have a much larger opening we've never bothered to measure it but it's about twice the opening that you have going out and you'll notice the difference especially comes in handy if you're doing electronic ignition or anything else power flow anything else to boost the horsepower of your 180 0360 in a tiger or in a cheetah even and then here's the front baffle seals they've all been checked and cleaned then they've been clean again and then they've been primed now here are the exit ramps they're getting their coats of paint and we'll begin the process of putting this all together again ladies and gentlemen on their youtube channel we have lots of videos of baffles and baffle seals and sealed material different ways to put them different ways to do the corner wide variety of options out there for you so pick a system you like and keep it in good shape and you'll have good engine cooling and that's what's really important in the Tigers is you want to have that airflow because you need it to, to cool the engine. By the way, one of the quickest speed mods, and it's not much speed, but it's a lot for cooling, is cooling drag. You get an engine that flows air over the engine to cool it better, and you'll pick up a little speed because you don't have as much parasitic drag. Plus, you're going faster and you're getting better engine cooling. So now here, ladies and gentlemen, we can see the pop rivets are all coming into place on the air exit ramps with the little washers inside to hold everything in place. And as you can see, it was all primed and painted and ready to go. And now we're going to get ready because now that the exit ramps have been done, we're going to mask off the cowling and we're going to somewhere down the line, we want to paint the inside of the cowling all with that Emron white or the polyurethane white. That way, should you ever have an oil or a fuel leak in the engine cowling, it shows up against the white very easily. Now, on this particular aircraft, the front strut, according to the logs, had not been pulled in 11 years. 
it broke free fairly quickly, but it still required a couple hours in the hot langer hanger. I'm sorry, working it out with a um, a ratchet strap tied to the door, the aircraft all braced and everything, so that it could be pulled out. And once we had it out, as you saw from the original pictures, all the chips in the front, we roll locked it down to the bare metal. Then it was primed and it was painted. And while we were there, we did a few other things with the fairing ring and the uh, boot that goes on the bottom. And as you can see there, there's the ratchet strap to the front door, pulling on it in the right angle so we get a good pull. So as we're rocking it back and forth, there's some mechanical force to pull the strut out of the joint. And as you can see here, it took a while to get it out. Now, not having been pulled in 11 years, we didn't find any corrosion. The spindle was in good shape. So a lucky day for the owner. I mean, we've had aircraft not had the spindle pulled in seven years and they had to be cut out of the airplane. So again, like what you do with anything when you pull the spindles and all out, once you have it off the airplane, periodically you're going to want to clean it down going to want to prime it check everything and then you're going to paint it and you're going to want to use a good hard paint a polyurethane some people prefer the jet glows as a hard paint but you want to put some paint up there because you don't want those chips and uh, things that you get from the propeller and the runway on the front strut from allowing the metal to start to rust because it is a iron kind of metal so there it is hanging in t6 bravo getting a bit of paint and it's going back on the airplane and as we mentioned why we were there we took the fairing no seal ring for the strut and we did the same thing do it we cleaned it we primed it and we're painting it so stay tuned for some more fun by the way as i mentioned earlier on the lower cowling not on the outside the chips we were worried about but on the inside where the air exit ramps were we're going to put a good polyurethane on the inside and white and again the reason for this is it gives you a nice bright engine compartment that you can find things when you drop it it doesn't blend in if you drop a screw it'll show up on the white the other big thing is, is that you have an oil or a fuel leak of any kind the brown or the blue is going to show up on the white cowling so if you start seeing a blue mist near one of your primers in your engine compartment you can pretty well go that you've got a fuel leak same thing happens on exhaust leaks the ash will show up quite nicely on the white emrine inside the cowling just be sure you wipe it down and again use a good hard emrine now as part of the lower cowling repaint we repainted the boot so that it's white on the out on the outside of the airplane it was starting to get a little bit of sun faded it'll look a lot better now when people walk up to the airplane and then finally we took the strut and the strut was painted with emron uh, I'm, I'm sorry i say emron but i really mean to say is a polyurethane like emron don't want to be telling you the wrong paint use whatever paint your paint shop likes using because they're the ones that are going to have to judge this but it looks pretty good when it's all painted and ready to go back on the airplane so stay tuned now people ask all the time do i really have to open my electric fuel pump up every year at annual and look in there yes you do because sometimes when you look in and you'll notice like the black strainer on the left it's not functioning anymore it's distorted it's missing a ring so it wasn't doing a very good job of fuel straining at all so we replaced it with a one that we keep in the stock and these are available from aircraft spruce we just put a new one in and now we know we're not going to be any contaminant into the uh, carburetor as with any long and convoluted job it really is very satisfying when it all starts to go back together the rocker covers have been painted the baffles have been redone the baffle seal material is being added to it the baffles and the baffle seals are being put back on the airplane so it's starting to come together to become a flying machine once again there's something very satisfying about that so that's why we have all these pictures in here for you to show you the various stages that we go through as we're going along on this again there's nothing complicated about this. It's just one of those things where you need to take your time, move slowly, and step by step, you will eventually get there. And when you get there, you're going to have a nice looking engine compartment that's also going to be helping additionally cool the airplane. Now, here are the front baffle seals that people pay very little attention to and the baffle seals around the front where it mates up against the nose bowl and that forces the cooling air 
into the engine compartment. You don't want to have a hole around your starter or anything else. So that's why we spend a lot of time with a light and some RTV looking for those leak holes because leaking air, once it leaks out, it doesn't do you any good for cooling. So ladies and gentlemen, take a good look at your airplane and make sure all your seals are in good shape. Again, this is the middle of summer, so this is a time that you'll know that if you have a cooling issue or not not so bad in winter matter of fact on the two place airplanes they cool so well that in winter they used to make a oil temperature winterization kit to keep your oil temperature up a little higher and then there's the exhaust seal that's the big critical one for letting stuff out right there by the hot air and then the other one that we like to really address is the one by the starter and we actually have a video of a whole one just of the starter ring being cut out and bolted to the airplane then you want to make sure that your inner cylinder baffles you want to check the springs and if the springs aren't there you want to use safety wire to pull them together because what this does this forces the air through those cooling fins between the cylinders and out the appropriate spot in the bottom and that will help keep your exhaust boss and your intake boss in the cylinder nice and cool it also prevents a bit of erosion and wear but again you want to make sure that you have all these done properly when you do the safety wire on the inner cylinder baffles make sure the wire doesn't drape across one of your oil return tubes because it will fret it will wear a hole and then you'll have a brown stain on the bottom of your nice new white cowling that you've done so again there's nothing complicated in this just take your time do neat work because you only have to do it one time and it will continue to look good down the road so pull those safety wire straps there are springs for that um, the springs are getting hard to come by safety wire is quite easy so again ladies and gentlemen nothing complicated here just take your time and do good work now in this particular case you can see that this engine does have um, cylinder head temperature probes and I hadn't looked at the exhaust yet but I'm pretty sure it's going to have EGD probes even though there's really nothing instrumented on the panel and they are going to be talking about sometime early next year to go with a, a JPI engine management system on their engine to maintain it to get the remaining 500 hours out of it but also too by having an engine management system put in the airplane when they get their new engine they've already got the engine management system to monitor that nice new toy that cost them a lot of money so as you can see here the baffles are going back on with the seals we've got the large area cut washers uh, we cut those on the shear that gives a large surface area so the baffles won't flex and want to crack like they're prone to do and then it starts to look pretty good when you get it all put back on the airplane um, the black and white make con such a contrast but again you're not going to be seeing it when all the seal materials on there and when you get it all done you're going to have a nice cool running engine so the baffle seals are available from the Grumman and Pilots Association. We're having some knives made up now. But you have to admit, this looks a lot better than the you know, rocker covers we started with, the baffle seals in multiple colors, and the original black seal from the factory that it had worn out many years ago. So ladies and gentlemen, by just doing these few simple things, it takes a lot of time, and I admit it's a chunk of money, but look at the difference that's a 1500 hour engine and when you get it all finished and all put back together it doesn't look like a 1500 hour engine anymore it looks like just something was done to it so stay tuned for some more fun another little project was to straighten out the wingtip strobes and how they were mounted in the wingtips and i think you'll have to agree that these led strobe nav lights they came out looking quite nice when they were finally secured in their proper places in the wingtips. So it's a nice illumination on the aircraft, makes you good and visible when you're flying. It also helps keep you with the anti-collision stuff, current with the uh, current FARs on anti-collision rules. So stay tuned while we have some more fun. So here we're putting on probably one of the most critical seals we have on the engine and it's the one that runs on the front baffle that mates up with the front nose bowl to help keep the air and force it through the engine compartment. And as you can see here it's been put back on, it's been riveted, it's been slit so that it folds nicely and 
contours against the nose bowl quite well. You may have to use a set of clamps and all to hold it in place to get everything set up to go when you drill the corners and everything for the folding of the material. But again, not a hard job. Take your time and I think you'll be pleased with the result. And as part of the rigging, we're going to change a lot of the hardware and we're going to check everything in the back on all the uh, control horns and everything for all the hardware to make sure they've been properly lubricated. They're not wearing, they don't need to be replaced. But again, as part, this is all part of the rigging. And as you saw originally, we had a lot of slack in the cables up in the front and we had to change out the trim hardware in the back. So it took about five hours to do the rigging on this airplane to bring everything into line. The net effect was about five to seven knots depending upon how you want to measure it as an increase in speed. So on the same fuel burn, a little bit more. Now they don't happen often, but every once in a while that front shaft seal at the front of your light combing, it will start to leak oil and it shows up and blows back, runs down the front, hits the muffler, chars on the exhaust route so anyway you may occasionally have to replace that front seal it's available in two different types a split and an unsplit version choose your weapon lively for what you like and keep an eye on that oil seal in the front of your engine and as part of any annual we always check the rigging and in this particular case we had to adjust the rigging and while we were there we went up and checked all the calipers for the brake line Again, a remarkably clean airplane, and the little bit of dust and debris you see on the floor here was cleaned after the operations were done. But we wanted to make sure the bridle cables were all attached properly to the ailerons so that everything would work as anticipated and not have any slack, and the cable tensions were set. By the way, the rudder cables were laying on the floor, so after the rigging, nice crisp rudders. Well, not a biggie, but when you have to repaint paint your dipstick with the yellow like Lycoming used, it sure makes it look nice and easy to find. So again, not a biggie one to do. And then of course, once you do the double bead and the canopy seal, then it's time you're going to have to adjust um, the canopy latch adjust with the shims. And you have to make sure you have to move some from one side to the other. And again, this was a low time 1500 hour 1976 Grumman Tiger. So let me kind of recap where the 70 hours of additional projects other than the 25 or the annual went on this airplane. We did the front strut and as you saw the front fairing ring was repainted. The trim mechanism in the back was done. The canopy latch was readjusted. The front seals and the double bead seal on the canopy were done. A broken seat handle was addressed and the proper seat, hair, seat hardware was added to the aircraft. And in this case, it was the clevis bolts that were needed. In continuing the list, we had cammed out screws. Keep spare screws in a little pill bottle in your airplane. So when you do have a screw that's starting to cam out, throw it away and replace it with a new one. We found the upper missing upper cowling bolts. We had broken brackets on the upper cowling. We had a spinch a punched out spinner back plate there was one piece of bad scat tubing the baffles you saw we had to redo and the baffle seals were redone and along the way the rocker covers got painted so not too bad for that part of the engine and then finishing up we addressed the elevator mismatch in the back and it was a simple fix simply loosening the bolts trimming the elevator and retightening elevator was matched so it was an easy fix on that didn't have to match drill to the oversize the air exit ramps for additional cooling were installed the lower cowl was painted an electric fuel strainer was replaced the inner baffle cylinders were checked and tightened rigging was done on the airplane the fuel selector was rebuilt doing another thousand hours I'm sorry another 500 hours and the head of the uh, oil dipstick was repainted to make it look nice so ladies and gentlemen we hope you found all this work on this airplane useful and informative thanks so much for watching and have a great day flying your Grumman <laughs>
and as a little treat, when Lily was just a little puffball, she and Tarzan, they still play like this all the time, attacking each other and tumbling. And Tarzan also does this with Hopscotch, our bigger ginger. So I'll throw through these little treats in there for you so you can watch them play and have fun. Hope you're having a good day, and we'll see you with another video.